public forum to order at uh, 6.45 on uh, Tuesday evening. First speaker tonight is Thomas Yates. Everybody will get five minutes tonight. No, not for a public forum. Okay. Good evening. My name is Thomas Yates, 30 Avery Street, Stratford, Connecticut. I want to talk about WPCA. The June 22nd, 2011 meeting of the Trumbull Sewer Commission minutes, Commissioner Hamford talks about Stratford WPCA reply about connecting all of Nichols South sewer project to Stratford sewage system. Stratford wanted a connection fee of $3,500 per household, roughly 150 homes if Trumbull connected to Stratford. Stratford would have received over half a million dollars. The Trouble Commission tabled it for future talks. July of this year, Trumbull's first selectman, Tim Herbst, put out on the town of Trumbull's website that he has been having ongoing negotiations with Stratford's mayor, John Harkins, about connecting Trumbull with Stratford's sewage system, whether the plant is sold or not. He wants Trumbull to join. Also, the apartments that were built at Keating Ford roughly 160 units uh, at a connection fee of $3,500 per unit. That's over half a million dollars. I was talking with the, Stratford, uh, the developer's front man from Stratford, and he told me in this very room two years ago, they paid a lot of money to tie into Stratford sewers. Okay, now Avalon, Cut Spring Road, there's roughly 140 units there, times 3,500 per unit. That's over half a million dollars in connection fees. These two projects total over one million dollars in connection fees. Where'd the money go? Since Harkins became mayor, no revenue on line item of the WPCA, line item 38938-4080, WPCA connection fees. From 2008 to 2015, zero. No money on this line for connection fees. Okay, now. Where'd the money go for that? I was, I, 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 I got an idea. I think it's in the town's general fund or the reserve fund. And if it's there, that's illegal. That money should have went right to WPCA. If the money went somewhere else, who authorized this? And put it out in print so everybody in Stratford could see where the money went from these two projects. Okay? Now, if the plant is sold and Trumbull, let's say next year Trumbull joins, any money that Trumbull would have paid Stratford would go to New Haven because they now own the plant. Okay? Now, everybody's been getting letters and bills about uh, senior uh, apartments and stuff like that. In 2008, there were 18,795 homes that were being billed for, on the sewage system. In 2009, 18,854. It's 59 more units. In 2010, 18,840, it went down by 14. In 11, it went 18,889, it went up 49. In 2012, 18,867. Same thing in 2013, 18,867. In 14, 18,870. In 15, 18,870. And for the budget of 2016, 18,870. Something's wrong with this. There should be more units that are being built. The apartments are supposed to be built just like a single, or excuse me, single family home, two family, or three family home, like you're in the Heights or anywhere else in this town. Now, if your people want more money from the two family, three family. Maybe these units are not even paying any bills. You know, that this should be all investigated, put out in print that they actually pay into the sewer fees. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Before we call the next person, given that there's only a couple of us here right now, do you know if there's a reason why or is there another function going on that we've missed most of our council member? Do we want to give him a couple of minutes? The only ones I know of um, are Mr. Cubic called me. He had to work tonight. Mr. Massey has to work. And Mr. Forrester, I think, is going to be late because of his job. Those, those are the only ones that notified me so far. And nobody else is in the office? What's that? Nobody else is in the office? Ken, Ken Poisson called Carol, said he'll be late. He'll be late. Yeah. This is disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Okay, thank you. Next speaker is uh, Richard Brown.
Everybody state their uh, name and address, please, when they come up to the podium. Richard Brown? No. Next is uh, Virgil Watson. Good evening, I'm Virgil Watson from 135 Plymouth Street. Um, I'm here today to talk in favor of the uh, Wilcoxon's proposed ice rink. This is an idea that the uh, Wilcoxon Fathers Club came about a couple of years ago, and we're trying to get the support of the town to um, put it in. I believe it's on the agenda for tonight. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of words about it. Um, I think it's a, a great idea as a father in the neighborhood. You know, we all gather at Longbrook when the uh, ice freezes um, and, a, and a, a surface that won't possibly melt and have children fall through would probably be safer. Um, but it also uh, freeze faster and be there more permanently and be a gathering point for all the people in the neighborhood to come together and just enjoy our neighborhood and our neighbors a little more. Um, the, the proposed arena is a uh, 50 feet by 100 foot. Um, rink. It consists of a liner and uh, sh short boards that would surround it. Um, you can probably see similar ones I know in surrounding areas, generally with bigger lots, you see them in people's backyards. Um, but um, we've had a few conversations. I know there were a couple of um, questions that were brought up. Um, there's a, I think, I don't know if you've received, you've received the handouts for it. Um, the, the questions that were asked by um, let me get the name right, I'll, uh, by uh, John Merriam of the Longbrook Park Commission to answer in that handout. Um, but I just wanted to personally come here, you know, there's a, there's a group of us, we're trying to uh, work to enhance our neighborhood and uh, get things for our kids in the parks in the winter, and an ice rink's a great, great thing to have. Um, I think it would be a wonderful addition to the neighborhood. I know people are concerned that it might, you know, draw too much business to the downtown. If we have more people coming to um, enjoy the outdoors, they're going to be spending money in our in our shops and stuff. And I'm I'm concerned about that too. But I'm sure the you know the sports replay maybe they can stock up on extra skates so they can have enough so that they don't run out. Um, I know when it gets cold, they run out of pucks and stuff like that pretty quick. But I, I'm sure Dunkin' Donuts can buy more coffee and stuff to um, deal with the onslaught. But um, I give it my full support. I know my family supports it. They couldn't be here tonight. I know there's a curriculum council meeting that conflicts with this meeting, and there's other events. There's um, other fathers. Uh, Kane Bosma's at hockey practice with his kids, and there's other sporting events that are going on that conflict with this. But I, I, I'm speaking on behalf of a, a number of families in the, the, you know, the Longbrook Park area that are really strong supporters of this. So um, we'd appreciate your help in making this a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Um, I have a question. Just a question real quick before you leave. Um, I got to hand out. I'm just reading through it quickly. Yep. Is there any costs that need to be borne by the town? Um, the, uh, the Wolf Cox and Fathers Club has, um, I, I think, several thousand dollars to pay for the, cons the purchasing of the materials. And it's a volunteer organization, so um, we would be volunteering to do a lot of the maintenance work and the, the general upkeep. Um, I think the, the question of the... Um, the operate so that I think for the purchase and stuff no um, there's questions about the operating hours I believe those would be handled the way maybe you would check out the the courts basketball courts or, or not about the uh, you know the tennis courts or whatever it would be uh, maybe on a small fee basis for the um, the maintenance of it and maybe a fee associated with using the lights um, but there would be no um, major would, would the organization be able to handle the liability or is that something you can ask the town to see if they could no, yeah, the, the, the organization doesn't want to hold the liability for it. It would, it would um, be with the town. I think probably the attorney could probably answer that a little better, how that, that's generally handled. And there's no cost for people to use this? No, it would be available to anyone to use. Um, we, would, we would like for it to be available, um, like, as I said, on a sign-out basis. So, you know, our organization would probably want to have a, a day on a weekend where, you know, for a few hours the uh, families from Wilcoxon can come as a fundraiser to you know, sell hot chocolate and have a you know to to raise some funds and get everybody together, and I'm sure other organizations. I know there's you know the St. James Fathers Club or whoever would probably want to do something similar, where 
it'd be a place to just gather like our parks you know you can go there and have an event sign it out with the town mm -hmm. um, that's the nature of it thank you you're welcome Next speaker is Wally Kadim. Name is Wally Kadim, 196 Lock and Coors, Traffic, Connecticut. First of all, it's good to see everyone who decided to come out tonight. Um, I, I think it has a lot to do with what's really going on in the town. I don't know if they're ashamed to show their face or what. But it's really sad when you represent a district and don't come out and hear the people speak on the different things that, that actually affects the town. So that's not a good look at all, at all. Because if you love the town, whether you're going out of your seat or not, you want to be here. And you guys showing us that you do love the town. So I'm happy to see you guys came out. Um, with that being said, I'm just going to get straight to it. WPCA. I mean, <laughs> there's so many things to be said back and forth about it. But the deal is no good. And no matter how many times you paint the picture, we should regionalize, we should do it. It's no good. Just, just don't do it. Just keep our plan, save our own money. Because you cannot tell me all these years we've been paying the taxes on the sewer treatment and it keeps going up and up and up, that that money is not there to fix the roads. You can't give me the excuse, oh, we need to do the roads. We, we need to change the pipes in the road. We need to dig up the road and change all the pipe. Don't make no excuse. There's no excuse. There's no reason to sell that plan. Perfectly good plan. So there's no reason to sell it, just like a lot of things we sell in this town that we regret later. Don't regret this later, because it's going to have a long impact, a long-lasting impact to my children, perhaps even my children's children. So that whole sign, I mean, I see so many signs, yes, no, yes, no. It's just a gimmick. No, that's the answer. Do not sell the WPCA. Do not sell a plan, period. We have a very good one. Don't sell it. I'll say it again. Don't sell it. Moving right along. Shakespeare Theater, I've been here 17 years, and 17 years you guys have been sitting on the theater. Listen, it's already there. If you can build these other buildings going up just as fast and they last and they work, that building's already there. Just finish it up and let a, a private entity run it. The town don't have to do, do anything. I'm quite sure there's so many people who love the arts that will volunteer their time to run that place. Let's stop making all these excuses year after year about why we can't fix the Shakespeare Theater. And I have to say this, because if you look at the breakdown, of how the town is structured economically. There's so many salaries that you, now we're in a deficit, but how do you justify keep getting a raise and a raise and a raise, how is that possible? How do people keep getting raises when we're supposed to be in a deficit? And then you have a, you have a situation where we have a $5.1 million gap to fill. That's very bad management. I don't really know all, all the ins and outs, but I, I can read and I see what I've been seeing. There's places you can make cuts, um, I even spoke with my councilwoman, Stephanie Phillips. She's very intelligent. I love her to death. She even pointed out so many ways we can cut things that we really don't need that can cover that deficit inside of two years. And I'm quite sure if she looked deeper, because she's very wise in that matter, she can find more. But when you just purposely pay tons and tons of lawyer fees fighting these cases that you could have just settled, you're killing us. You're killing us. How much money do you have to throw away that ain't yours? Not speaking to you guys personally, but we know Head Honcho makes the main decision. But I'm saying that to say this. We have to tighten up. We, we have a town attorney, but yet we're using other town attorneys, I mean, I mean other lawyers, over and over and over again, these astronomical fees. These things you have to grab a hold of and, and get them fixed. I mean, you can't just say yes to everything you get in the sheet from, from the, um, the packet that you get as a council person. You can't just say, hey, yeah, yes, yes, yes. No, investigate. Say no if it ain't justified. Because if it keeps falling down onto the town, on, on, onto the taxpayers, we won't have a, we won't have a town. Because everyone's going to leave, just like they all leaving now. I know there's another conversation going on. Y'all want to come up here and speak? Y'all can come up here. Then you have, look, look at the, the mismanagement. The mismanagement thing, it has to get fixed. You can't keep hiring people and then hiring and hiring this for the same job. You have like, how many people you need as an assistant? How many salaries do we have to pay? And then you have what's going on like presently in the, in the South End, right? Access Road. Uh, family, uh, Stephanie set up a meeting about that, that, that plot of land that was AMR for, to be a park. And it's been a park. And it says it's supposed to be 
forever, perpetuity, however you say it. And, and people keep coming after that property. The property's off the books. Leave it alone. Let people have the buffer between their home and business. You can't have all of this, this corporate, co corporate business going on to where you have no peace of mind where you live at. It can, that's the buffer. Let's keep the buffer. So I know you're going to, your guys are not going to be there. God willing, those people who are running can replace the seats um, and, and maybe have to deal with this situation going forward. I pray that God allow me to be one of those people on November 3rd, Wally Kadeem. I'll be running in the 3rd District. So I'm saying that to say this. You have to allow the quality of life to resonate because that's the joy of living in the town. I know we got five minutes. I respect that. Just give me just, just less than one minute. We have to keep in our minds the quality of life versus living in a city and living in a town. I'm from New York City originally. I don't want to live there anymore. This is a town. Let's keep it a town. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Take care. Henry Bruce. Uh, Henry Bruce, 37 Jefferson Street. I don't even know what to say. Until you walked in, Mr. Connor, I was, uh, you know, it was, it was basically the three people that voted against the, the sewer bill. You know, and, but if anybody was going to walk in from the other side, I, I, I'm glad it was you because I have no bones to pick with you. Because, because in, another, in another 60 days you won't be sitting there. Oh, oh yes, here's the object of my, 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 uh, my, uh, my scorn. So I, I'll get on with what I was going to speak about. You know, Sorry I'm late, I work two jobs. Yeah, we all do. Um, sure, sure you do. Yes, I do. This is one of them. My father used to say, he used to, he used to say, if it looks like a skunk, it walks like a skunk, and it smells like a skunk, well, it must be a skunk. And I tell you, this deal for this, to, to sell this water treatment plant smells worse than a skunk. And the campaign that's been going on to, uh, to try and justify it, to, yeah, walk out, to try and justify it is like, lipstick, is like lipstick on a pig. That's what this campaign is. And if Mr. Poison would stand here and listen and take and you know take the heat for once in a while maybe he'd learn something but basically you know the the, the campaign has really been uh, probably the worst aspect of this because it's brought out some of the worst activity and worst actions of people you know I mean ends don't justify the means using kids that you coach to distribute flyers illegally in mailboxes is not what I call good good manners and that's what's been going on you know, lots of money has been spent to defend this terrible deal. Over half a million dollar of taxpayers' money went into to negotiating this deal and then defending it, and $30,000 was spent by us to try and have our, have our day and have this referendum go through. So why are we doing this? Why is this whole thing happening? It's because this town council would not do its job in terms of the budget. This has basically been fiscal irresponsibility for six years. I've only really been paying attention for three. But I do know how to read a budget. And if I just look at the last three years budget, I could easily find $10 million of spending that's nice to have. Well, we don't live in times since 2009 where we can afford nice to have expenditures like nice luxury SUVs, the types of raises people have, there's, there's just a lot of things going on in terms of spending here at Town Hall that's just nice to have. And the fact that this council rubber stamped that really is, you know, it's the, reason, it's the reason why I'm involved in the campaign. It's the reason why for the next three weeks I'm going to make sure that everybody who doesn't support this deal gets elected and we'll have a new f bunch of faces in here and fiscal responsibility will re be restored. Thank you. Peggy Barnish. Good evening. My name is Peggy Barnish. I live. I wish I knew what that was. 
65 Long Branch Avenue here in Stratford. Um, and I am here to speak about the WPCA. I would like to start out by reading, in case anybody has missed it, including some of the audience that I know is in favor of the sale, I would like to read this information from an organization called Arcadis. It was information, uh, it was an investigation made by the New Haven General, uh, the, uh, whatever you call it, the, the region, the uh, WPCA, uh, the, I can't make this thing work, okay. Okay, the yes vote says 189 miles of aging pipes and the plant and the pumping stations will require upgrade and it will cost millions and millions. This is what the yes people are saying. Now the fact is, this is the group that New Haven hired to do an investigation on Stratford. The fact is, it is in very good condition, having been upgraded less than 10 years ago. The plant performs extremely well and the town has benefited from significant nitrogen credits as a result of superior nitrogen removal. Significant capital expenditures are not expected to be necessary at the WPCF, which is what they're calling us, for a number of years. So the people, some of them who are on this council, who are going around saying we need to join New Haven because we need their, their help to buy, uh, to get discounts in buying all the things that we need for our upgrades. We're not gonna need it for a very long time. And for those of you who have not been following, there is also a suit that has been filed by certain citizens of New Haven against the New Haven, Greater New Haven Region of Plant. What they're, what they're alleging is that there is constant storm runoff into Long Island Sound, wastewater into Long Island Sound from New Haven. We have never once in Stratford been guilty of that. Never once in all these years have we ever been guilty of that. And the other thing is, um, that they can't even handle the volume they have and there's expected to be more. Since the beginning of the 20th century, they have been warned about upgrading their own facilities and their own infrastructure, none of which they have ever done. Now, I spoke to a lawyer who used to be a town attorney and I asked him how this lawsuit with the people of New Haven against New Haven could possibly affect Stratford. I mean, we haven't even joined them yet, but should we join them? How would it affect Stratford? And what he said is, whether New Haven wins or loses, there will be court costs, there will be attorney's fees, there will be all kinds of legal fees. And those fees, by general accounting practices, will go into the general budget. That means that if Stratford joins New Haven, whatever legal costs there are for this suit that has already been filed, already been filed, we will have to pay a portion of those legal fees. Now, we in Stratford have already been suckered by Mayor Harkins into paying fees for him to sue us in the hopes that we wouldn't, couldn't get a referendum, which was also silly, but that was hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, if we get suckered into the legal fees for New Haven, it's going to be a great deal more than that. I would hope that we would not be responsible for the fines if they lose. I would hope we would not be responsible for that. But um, it just doesn't make any sense to me that we would join a group that's already in so much trouble that we can only end up with more costs than we have. Now, I'm sorry that Mr. Santi isn't here because I had a couple of conversations with him about this and about the workers at the plant. And what he said to me was very disparaging of them. He said, these people are not certified, they're not qualified, they know what they're doing, the management is terrible. Well, how can it all be so bad if we're among the top in the state? Doesn't make any sense. And how can New Haven have people who are going to teach us when they're among the worst in the state? It doesn't make any sense. And I have had so many homeowners, one, one even just last week, tell me what a great job that the WPCA here has done, the people have done, that his property, which could be in great dis distress, uh, could have been after Irene, could have been after Sandy, could have been after any big storm. And he said those people did all the right things, even came out to help and saved his property after each storm, and he is not the first homeowner in Stratford I've heard say that. Now, are the people from New Haven going to come down and do that for the people in Stratford? I don't know. Why would they? They're not doing it for their own town of New Haven. Why would they come down and do it for Stratford? And are they going to come here? You bet. You check, and there are already a list of people in New Haven listing their names to come down here to take the place of the people in Stratford. So, you know, we can always sell the plant next year, 
to somebody maybe more reasonable, somebody in better shape. The first gentleman mentioned some connections we already have with Trumbo. So I ask you, please, not to rush into selling to somebody that we can't get it back from and that is going to cause us more money and more trouble. Thank you. Tina Manis. Hi, Tina Marie Manis, 315 Fox Hill Road, Stratford, Connecticut. Um, I want to come here tonight to thank John Harkins for the Our Lady of Grace sidewalks that were announced in the handicap spaces. I don't know if any of you had any hand in that, but that was really nice. It's amazing what happens in October, isn't it? I'm here today to express a serious concern that I have as a resident and friend. It's no secret I'm running for council. I'm blessed to have received endorsements from the Stratford Democratic Town Committee, the American Federation of Teachers, the Concerned Citizens Action Group, and just yesterday from the Four Stratford Network. As I walk through my neighborhood, I'm deeply grieved and concerned because I have heard the same report over and over again from residents. A man came to my door. He said the workers at the plant aren't qualified for their jobs. They make over $100,000 each, and they do nothing but sit around all day and talk to each other. My friend works at that plant. He lives in District 10. You know who he is. He's your friend's son. They're no loafers, none of them. They're laborers. I know this because my sister's boyfriend in high school worked there too. Her, his father, Kevin Moran, and his son were there in every storm, and they were the ones waiting in the tanks when they needed repair. They kept us safe through literally waiting in sewage. I'm grateful to them, and I'm grateful to all our public workers and all of our cops and teachers and all the people who keep us safe. I remember a time when in District 10, or it was nine then, they wanted to close our firehouse, and we fought against that. I was a little kid. You don't cut workers, and you don't abuse them. I'm appalled someone would say something like that about my brothers and sisters in the labor force. Just last week, I interviewed with Ask Me. They heard Strafford. They lowered their heads and shook them. This is not a town that loves labor. This is not a town that celebrates dedication to anything except the almighty dollar and how you can make a quick buck off your neighbor. I'm upset. I want to know who's going to address these lies, make them stop, and when. We can do better. Stephen Reguskis. Stephen Reguskis, I live at 96 Sutton Avenue. Um, I just wanted to talk about trying to keep a focus on what the real issues in this town are. There have been a couple of comments made during the response to public forum that seem to be aimed towards me. There are different anonymous cowards online that have made comments. I'm somebody who I've got financial difficulties, serious financial problems. I'm not alone in that. In this town, there are, everybody's living day to day. They're, they're struggling. They're trying to do the best that they can. And that's what I did for years. I, I was able to make ends meet, and then things get worse, and they fall apart, and the ends don't meet anymore. That doesn't mean that I'm somebody that should be unable to talk. I mean, do you have to buy freedom of speech now? That's, that's absurd. Um, I think things are put out there to try to humiliate me into being quiet. That's not going to happen. I believe in what I believe in, and I've got a right to get up and speak, and I will. We've got to stay focused. Um, each one of you has people in your district that are, they sit down with their bills, and they sit down with their checking account, and they're saying, how, how do I do this? And some of them have that sickening feeling when a tax bill comes and there's just no way to do anything about it. it it's a horrible feeling. I, I hope none of you ever have to experience it. And it's certainly not anything 
to be a source of amusement for any of you or to use, be used for political gain. Councilman Poisson, last month you said that uh, somebody got up and spoke about you folks not knowing anything about paying taxes. I didn't hear anyone say that. Nobody that I spoke to heard anyone say that, but you said you heard that comment and that one of the speakers didn't pay their taxes. That's me that you're talking about. Um, I think that your comment says more about you than it does about me. And I hope that we'll have 10 more people, 10 new people up there. Thank you. Walter Remkunis. The walk gets, gets longer the older you get. Walter P. Remkunis, 425 2nd Avenue. Seven months I haven't had a representative here at this town meeting. I wonder why they didn't come down and get somebody else to take his place. He was, hasn't been here, can't control anything. It should have, according to the, this damn thing. Why don't you people get some good electronics here <laughs> before you go? <sighs> okay. According to the council book, he should have been out and somebody else should have been elected in his place. So much for that. It's, we got a new one coming in in November. Uh, I wonder if you could steer me, who can steer me straight? Who do I have to see to get a couple grants in this town? Everybody's getting grants. I'd like to get a couple. I want to build a shopping mall with a high class, real high class restaurant up at Booth Memorial. Ideal place, look out, look out over the river. Number two, I'd like to build a 200 room Hotel in the Roosevelt Forest, beautiful. Put trails through it. I didn't touch it. But uh, anyway, I like to put a hotel up there. People walk through everything that's going on. And uh, it's illegal. It's legal, according to our town attorney, if it's going to bring monies to the town of Stratford to make up for the. For of uh, our ex-CO, the boys in the back room, went down and s fixed the town for the past couple years. You can't blame the mayor. All he is like on the front of a ship, a figurehead. That's all. The boys in the back room control it. I don't believe that the granting of this grant to the Stratford Stage Group, how in heck did they get a grant when they don't even have a signed paper from the town of Stratford? How in heck is that done? They're not even in the, in the property yet. They're not there, and they're getting a grant to spend money. Just like they're spending, they got the money, all the other monies that come in on that beer fest and stuff, they get control of that through the uh, Arts Commission. That's not right. It don't seem right. This is our, the people's land that you want to commercialize with that 120 room hotel, the high class restaurant you want to add on to the Shakespeare Theater you're not even fixing the theater and you're adding on a high-class restaurant according to the pictures I was giving a, a couple weeks ago. How did that happen? I think we got to have somebody else look at it and other than the town attorney group. This, well, this town attorney and his two assistants, what are they doing? Every time I turn around at one of the other meetings, I see some other, a lawyer from some firm here representing the town. We got three people supposedly, supposedly being paid by the town. You people voted it in at that time. 
and yet we're paying all these extra people, and it don't, it don't come cheap. I'll, I'll conclude. You people, I'm putting you to sleep. I'll give you one thing that uh, a friend of mine made several years ago. Mike Hendricks said, oh, you only got two more meetings, then you don't have to listen to this crap from us people in the public. Thank you. George Mulligan. George Mulligan, 429 Housatonic Avenue, Stratford. I'd like to invite anybody and everybody to go to my website, www. I'm sorry, www.transmute, T R A N S M U T E, dash gigo, G I G O. Dot com. Transmute means to change form, body, or substance. Gigo is garbage in, garbage out. I, I, I mentioned in the past about Mark Dumas and his FOI ruling and the desire for transparency. I'm going to now give you some reasons why I've asked uh, Stephanie and Matt and others to help provide the FOI request. The FOI request, which somehow went from our town attorney to Bertram Moses and Devlin, why our simple FOI request, which I've gotten freely in the past, being given to Bertram Moses and Devlin? I don't know. That's got to cost money. They, instead of supplying information, I have to go to Hartford for hearings. The lawyer's fees in 2007-2011 just for the town attorney, just for the town attorney, only five years. Bertram Mosen Devlin got $2.6 million, and uh, Bishop Kelly and Jackson got $1.6 million. That's $300,000 and $500,000 a year for town attorneys. The $300,000 just for Bishop Kelly and Jackson is more than they, the entire town attorney budget or fees that were paid from 1996 to 1998 each year. Why? Basically because they control the town charter revisions and it was done for them and it was done for the political parties. That information is going to be on my website about that. I have on the website, and I've, I've done FOI for all the information for those years, but they don't seem to want to present it. I don't know why. On my website, I have the top 35 of 643 defined benefit pensioners. Effective March, they're collecting $20.89 million off the budget. This is added to the $27.8 million on the budget on the website that goes to pay for the defined benefit pension bonds of 1998 and 2013. That's $48 million for pensions. No wonder you've got a, a, pension, a budget gap. Your entire budget's under $210 million, and between the on budget and off budget, you've got $48 million going to 644 people. And you're going to have to rebond anyway. Tom Yates made some points about 140 condos at Avalon, 158 Keating, and other points. Well, I've got on the website, on the website, on my website, from the town website, $3.5 million the town has as expenses without invoices. Go to my website and find $3.5 million that the town can't prove exist. They just made them up. Can, can I do that with the IRS or Connecticut Revenue Services? My FOI request how much money comes from businesses and how much from residents on collected taxes? Okay. Another FOI is, uh, is that questions about finder's fees, and there's a whole litany of finder's fees that go to lawyers and financial people who are prominent in the Democratic and Republican town committees. 
Now, and these are into the millions of dollars because these are three, four, and five percent of a hundred and sixty-two million dollar bonded. All the different bonds. All the, well, you see it on the website, transmute dash Stratford, uh, transmute dash gigo dot net. The raises, the benefits, the ethics. How do we have Richard Petrula's law firm has the contract or had the contract for the Board of Education? How did his how does his wife run for Board of Education? I feel like Cecilia in the old Simon and Garfunkel song, no sooner had I gotten up than my seat next to my orange Gatorade was taken. I don't know. I raised issues about debates. All these people want to have change, but you all, everybody in this audience, fears having me in a debate because you know why? The truth would set you free, and you're afraid it would send you to jail. Debate me. Let's work together. Let's find the problems, identify the problems, find solutions, and make it work. Instead of not caring about your fellow human beings, and only caring about your political parties, and your egos, and your wallets, why don't you actually have some self-respect? All of you, everybody in this room, have some self-respect and have debates. And I'll make one last point. Forrest Grafford, by inference, indicates that I'm against good government because I don't have their seal of approval. I don't want anybody's seal of approval. I don't want anybody's money for politics. All I want is your vote. Get me on the town council and let me work. Thank you. That concludes the uh, public forum. We will uh, start the council meeting at 8 o'clock. I'd like to call the uh, council meeting of October 13th to order at uh, 8 o'clock on uh, Tuesday evening. Um, I'd like to have an invocation by uh, Brian Dempsey. We, we pray, O oh Lord, for all those in our community who are responsible for our civic welfare, health, and security. May we only have a care for what will promote good government. Help us, each one, to do well the work we have to do for the good of all. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. All right, start off, uh, need a motion to approve the minutes of the um, September 14th meeting. So moved. By Mr. Second. Forrester, second by Mr. Dempsey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no ceremonial presentations. Uh, council members' response to comments from public forum. Start with um, Mr. Catalano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I only have one thing. I have a constituent who uh, we all know and love, Mr. George over there, who's filed numerous FOI requests with the town, and I have to. Uh, question why those haven't been filled in an expeditious manner and why it takes outside counsel to handle those. So I don't know if that's a, I think that's something that uh, we ought to do a little better at. I can't believe we're spending lawyer money to handle FOI requests that should be handled in-house. And obviously with information that should be readily available to anyone uh, who asks for it. 
So I would like to see those uh, items expedited, and I'd like to think we're not going to waste lawyer money keeping George from getting his information. Thank you. Ms. Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to echo the same thoughts that uh, Mr. Catalano had about the FOI requests. Um, we've already been cited for training, which we'll talk about later, but I agree without repeating that we should be more responsive. It's ridiculous that someone had to wait that many months, but we'll follow through on it and try to get that resolved. Um, I want to thank everyone who came out. Um, a couple of people I do want to respond to. Um, one of the first things is Mr. Gruskis. Um, he mentioned that he felt that uh, some comments were made that reference people who owe taxes could not or should not be allowed to be a speaker at the public forums. That's unheard of. In fact, it doesn't matter whether you owe taxes, pay taxes, as long as you're a resident of this town. Everyone should be feel welcome to come and speak at the open forum. Everyone should feel that they can be heard. So I apologize, I feel sorry that that is the case, but hopefully as we move forward that will improve. Um, a couple of things that came forward, um, Tina Manis, Ms. Manis had talked about the quality of the, and I think also um, Peggy Barnish, both. We're speaking specifically to the quality and the um, operational success of our WPCA, I agree. In fact, I did quite a bit of research. We have an exceptional facility. We have very few violations. In fact, we have a stunning performance compared to our other facilities. It is disappointing now, even as more information is coming out, that there's a lawsuit against the Greater New Haven Water P PCA that basically says they're not doing their job, that they are not making the investments that they're supposed to, they're not following the EPA rules that they're supposed to, and they're making no, no efforts to correct it. And this is an ongoing lawsuit. It was already an EPA decree, and now private action had to be taken to make Greater New Haven and New Haven do their jobs. What that means to me is that it makes no sense. The arguments that they do a better job than we do are false. They don't. Very simple. They're the Titanic. They're sinking, and we don't want to jump on board. Very simple. I'm very proud of our people who work at the WPCA. I've got lots of stories where they have protected the town, hours that they have devoted, selflessness that they have given. I'm very proud of them. And they are one of the most educated, finely uh, trained staff, to the point that even Greater New Haven did say to me directly, we wish we had your guys. So thank you both for bringing that forward. <clears throat> Mr. Bruce made, started to make a comment on something that I'm later on, and I don't have time now to elaborate. We can dig our way out of this mess. It's a mess. It's an unfortunate mess, um, one that the public did not create. But there is another alternative. We can tighten our belt. We can trim the fat out of our budget. I know I found $2.9 million. It's not going to happen all in one year. You know, a lot of people say you're not going to find $10 million in one year. No, you're not. But it's going to have to be a concerted plan that everybody buys into over the next couple of years as we rebuild our fund balance and we get ourselves back on track. And we can do this without laying off people, touching the, we don't have to raise taxes, we don't have to hit the schools. We can do it if we put our minds and work together, and that's what it needs to happen. So I thank you, Mr. Bruce, for bringing that forward. Outside of that, the last thing I want to do, my little self-promotion of the Pumpkin Festival is coming up this Saturday at Booth Park, and I invite everyone to participate, and in particular, we have some new attractions. We have a falconeer that's going to be there. We have some animal shows and interactive that we're hoping that the kids will enjoy. And we also have a pie baking and a scarecrow making contest that I am 
really trying to get people out there to be, participate in with prizes. We actually, you know, it doesn't cost you anything and we have prizes. So please pass the word around. We're pretty excited about it. We usually get around 4,000 people. It's a great day and you can do this. We have lots of free events. You don't have to have money, but everything that we do have is pretty low cost and it's for the kids. That's it. Just really old fashioned for the kids. So thank you. Mr. Santhi, this is comments to the public forum. I have no comments at this time, Mr. Chairman. I had a prior engagement, that's why I'm late. Mr. Dempsey? Uh, no comments. Mr. Poisson? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As several council members have said in the four years that I've been here, I think people lose sight of the fact that all 10 of us are volunteers up here. Uh, I was late coming to uh, the public forum tonight, and people were very rude and, and jeered my arrival. I do work two jobs. I have three kids, and I haven't seen any of them today. And by the time this meeting is over, they're all going to be asleep. So I think people need to remember that we volunteer our time, and we make the best decisions that we can. I know that in uh, the four years that I've been up here, this last tax cycle, over 60% of the homeowners in my district, their taxes went down. And that was the one thing that people always tell me, why are my taxes so high? Working along with the mayor and the whole town council, we've worked hard to stabilize everything. And I don't want to see everything get jeopardized by the sale of the plant not going through. Because Stephanie may have found $2.9 million, but we're gonna need way, way more than that. And I don't wanna see all the hard work that we've done just in my four years and everything that's been accomplished just disappear. So I urge everybody to please vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Forrester. Mr. And the chair has nothing. Thank you. Communications uh, bills. Um, one thing before we start, I do have from members of the council, um, this was sent over to Mr. Kubik. Uh, it's about the um, teacher bargaining units uh, negotiations. If anybody wants to attend, um, we have the, the council uh, can have a representative at that table. So. Uh, it's October 15th, 23rd, November 2nd, 12th, and 19th at 5.30. So if anyone who wants to be there, just let me know. Next is uh, 4.1, partial abandonment of Sydney Street. Uh, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney Barry Knott, who represents the party requesting the abandonment, is here with some uh, maps and some information. Uh, so I think it would be probably the most efficient way to proceed is to ask him to come up to the podium and talk to you. Yes, Mr. Knott. Well, uh oh, the lion's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's it's me? blood and paid for. Be bitter too. <laughs> Good evening, Ms. Phillips, <coughs> Madam Secretary, Mr. Chairman, members of the Town Council. My name is Barry Knott. I'm a lawyer with the firm of Knott, Knott and Dunn with offices at 1656 Main Street. And I'm here this evening on behalf of 27 Sydney Street, Inc. and Sydney LLC, both of which are subsidiaries of the Dock, Inc. Now, the Dock, Inc. used to own the Dock Shopping Center. It doesn't own the Dock Shopping Center anymore. 
Erstad Biddle Properties owns the Dock Shopping Center. However, the Dock Inc., which previously did own the Dock Shopping Center, the Osborne family, owns the driveway into the Dock Shopping Center from East Main Street. When you go in and make a left to the stop and shop, it, it still owns that. And it owns half a dozen properties on Sydney Street, which is the next street uh, south of the entrance to the Dock Shopping Center. Now, I've handed you two maps showing the same property. The first is an assessor's map, which shows in the lower left-hand corner Sydney Street, and I've highlighted in yellow that portion of Sydney Street which we are asking to be abandoned. And you can see that we are not asking that all of Sydney Street be abandoned. The, the reason for that is that we do not own the houses at 25 and 26 Sydney Street across from each other. Those two houses are owned by private individuals not related to my client. My client does own all the property out on East Main Street and my client owns all of the properties directly to the east of those two houses at 25 and 26 Sydney Street. The second map is another map, uh, a larger version of the same map showing Sydney Street and I've highlighted in yellow uh, all of that portion of Sydney Street which we are asking to be abandoned. You can see from the hatch marks on this map all of the properties that my client owns both to the east of uh, 25 and 28 Sydney Street and to the west of 25 and 28 Sydney Street out on East Main Street. Now we're not asking for that portion of Sydney Street in front of these two houses that we don't own to be abandoned, nor are we asking for that portion of Sydney Street that leads out to East Main Street to be abandoned. We are only asking for the rear portion of Sydney Street to be abandoned. Now the plan is, that there's currently vacant houses on all those lots. The plan is that those houses are going to be raised, the lot is going to be consolidated into one parcel, uh, it is being marketed for commercial development right now, and ultimately what will happen is the entrance to that parcel will come in from the driveway to the dock shopping center that currently exists, and instead of people making a left to go to the old Blockbuster building or a left to go to the Stop and Shop building, they'll make a right to go into this parcel will there, where there'll be a 20 or 30 or 40,000 square foot retail building. Now, as is required by Section 8-24 of the general statutes, when this first request came to this council, you referred it to the Planning Commission for their advisory opinion. The Planning Commission did meet last month. I attended that meeting and they voted unanimously to approve this abandonment request. Now there's a new statute that goes into effect or went into effect on October 1st. It's called Public Act 15-147 and it requires the town council to send notice to people whose property are going to be affected by the abandonment of a street. Now there's an exception to that notice requirement set forth in that statute and that exception is where the abandonment itself does not affect the property to whom notice should be sent and there is still access to a major thoroughfare for the properties that abut that portion of the street that is not being abandoned. Both of those circumstances exist here. The two houses at 25 and 28 Sydney Street are not being affected by this abandonment because the street in front of those two houses is not being abandoned. Secondly, the street between those two houses and East Main Street is not being abandoned. Therefore, the second prong of the exception to that public act also, uh, also applies. So I have submitted to uh, Attorney Bishop proposed finding of facts to be made by you regarding this abandonment request in the event that you uh, are inclined to make a favorable recommendation and you're simply saying that the circumstances uh, for the exception to notice that are set forth in Public Act 15147 apply. 
and those conditions are that that portion of Sydney Street which is being abandoned does not bound the two properties not owned by 27 Sydney Street and Sydney LLC. And secondly, those two properties would not lose their sole access to East Main Street and therefore statutory no notice is not required. So I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Is there any questions for um, no. Mr. Knott? Um, Mr. Knott, what, what happens to the sewer line that runs through there? Who, the uh, sewer, the, and the, right away. The sewer line will be abandoned. The, the sewer line runs currently all the way down Sydney Street to the end of Sydney Street. Right. And it services those six houses that are now vacant. That sewer line is going to be abandoned at the new terminus of Sydney Street where the two houses that we don't own exist. So those two houses are still going to be served by town sewers, which then gravity feed out onto okay. East Main Street. So there will be no adverse effect to those uh, houses by virtue of the we, we need, sewer. We need to demolish it. That sewer line will be capped off or whatever. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, our new building will eventually tie into it. Yeah. And um, the last question is, with regards to that corner property, the old gas station, is that to be raised as well? Just Eventually it will be. We, there are, we don't have any plans for it right now. All of those properties are on the market. They are being actively marketed, but I'm not aware of any deals as yet. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ms. Phillips? The two houses that have occupants, um, 25 and 28, you said? Yes. I know that they're not required to be notified, but were they notified in any way? Do they have any idea that this is going to be abandoned? Not, and that that I'm, not that I'm aware of. I'm assuming you're abandoning the street because you want to do something else with the properties. That's true. Okay. Is there any plan or anything out yet as to what the thought might be, what you want to do with those properties? Yes, it's going to, it's going to be a commercial retail shopping center. Currently, this property is owned light industrial. All of the houses that are, that are on Sydney Street right now are not permitted in a light industrial use. They're all non-conforming uses because residential use is not permitted in a, in a light industrial zone. So what's happening here as a result of this abandonment request, the five houses that are vacant are going to be raised and those non-conforming uses are going to go away because we're going to redevelop the property with, with a commercial <coughs> retail use. The other two houses that we don't control are going to remain non-conforming uses until something happens with them. Either we buy it or they sell it to somebody else or whatever. And the two parcels out on the street, which we do control, out on East Main Street, will ultimately be developed as commercial retail property as well. Now under the town's plan of conservation and development, this request is consistent with all of the provisions of the town plan of conservation and development because it is recommended that this particular area of Stratford be developed in a commercial fashion. If, when that time comes, that this plan that you may be envisioning for this property comes forward, I'm assuming it would go through zoning, all the different land use boards, and at that time, would those two houses have an opportunity to be yes, notified and speak if they have any Most issues? likely, any development of this property, depending upon the size of the structure, is going to require what's called special case approval. And special case approval is essentially site plan approval, which requires a public hearing. And as a component of that public hearing, the applicant has got to provide notice to all abutting landowners. So those property owners would get notice of any development action that we ultimately pursue. Thank you. It would get published in the newspaper, too. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I, did, well, I, I don't have much to say about that other than uh, their councilman or former councilman might go talk to them because I know the guy who lives in that house and might let them know um, what's on the plan. But I don't know, is that your district now? No questions. The uh, I just have I just have a question. The uh, the 25 and 27 properties, uh, 
they're both up for sale right now? No, no, 25 and 28. I mean, 25 and 28. Are, as far as I know, they're not up they're for not, sale right now. 20, 28, the, the one on the south side of the street is an investment property. I think it's owned by Steve Michael's widow, as a matter of fact, Matt. That's the 28, right? The one with the sign, the, the one with the big advertising sign on it. I don't know who owns the, the one. That, the other guy that lives at the top of the street's a nice old guy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. As far as I know, they're not on the market. Any other questions? Probably will be now. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Dempsey. Is is there a chance uh, that the town is going to have to purchase these, or is this a, a private? And, no, no, this is all, this is all private. Itself. No, this is private. What will happen private is entity. Half, uh, half of the street that's being abandoned will go to the property owners on both sides, I see. which happen to all be my clients. Now, I, I didn't just whip this up, this idea, and send a letter to the town attorney. Before I did that, I met with John Casey and Kevin Morrissey in the engineering department to go over the proposed abandonment to see if they had any concerns vis-a-vis town rights of way or easements or drainage issues that they were concerned about because I knew that if that had been the case, they would be making recommendations to you that would have been contrary to my request. So before I went off half cocked asking for something that John Casey was not going to agree to, I met with them. They have no problems with this uh, proposal whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knott. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to? Yeah. Um, Mr. Wait, Chairman, I'd like to make Tim a motion to. Tim wants to. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I just, just, I want to make sure we stay uh, on the agenda. So you have two things actually you're going to have to do if you decide that you want to move forward with abandonment. The first is to make the finding of fact, as Attorney Nada suggested, basically vote to approve the handout that we've provided tonight. And then the next action item is to accept the report of the Planning Commission um, and determine to abandon the property. If, if if that's what your if that's what this body's uh, intent. Yeah. So we need to make a motion to approve the um, motion of the planning commission. If right, I would, so I would I would accept I, I would if you're going to move to abandon, you would want to accept uh, to uh, make the findings as uh, set forth in the handout. Um, I can provide another copy if you need. Um, somebody would have to make that motion to make those findings a fact, um, essentially by resolution. And then the next action item, again, if you choose to do so, would be to abandon, to accept the Planning Commission's report and vote to abandon. All right, could I have a motion no. to um, Mr. first? Chairman. Yeah, I'd like to make have a motion. Be, uh, I'd like to make a motion. motion of, of the uh, town attorney for the abandonment, right? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve the finding of the facts made by the town uh, council regarding the abandonment portion of Sydney Street. Second. Second by Mr. Forster. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> and second, we need a motion to accept the um, motion of the Planning Commission. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second, second by Mr. Forrester. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. The, were, uh, were we going to have discussion on that? Huh? Were we going to have discussion on that? Yeah. Um, Do we want to still like to see the homeowner notified, but um, the, the only thing I wanted to say about that, I was actually shocked to find that the Doc Inc. still had an interest over there in uh, having a long-time relationship with the people who own the Doc Inc. and run the Doc Inc. Uh, I think most people would agree that the Osborne family was probably one of the best corporate partners this town has seen, so uh, I don't doubt that they would do something tasteful over there. Thank you. So uh, back to all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next, the mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I'd like to make a comment regarding the uh, regionalization plan. Councilwoman Phillips, you brought up the lawsuit. And I can tell you the uh, timing of that article was not uh, the best, and it was one-sided, and they didn't give a response. But they, uh, they did issue a response. There's actually an article in the New Haven Register, I believe, today. And the statement from them was that the uh, Greater New Haven Water Pollution Control Authority denies any liability and states that it is operating its system in accordance with its lawfully issued regulatory permits and consent orders. The authority is in compliance in all material respects with consent orders issued by the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. 
Greater New Haven Water, Water Pollution Control Authority is also in constant communication with DEEP so as to be fully informed of any and all issues. Uh, the city of New Haven is also being sued, and I believe there might be other parties to that suit also. So depending on who you talk to, um, you might get a different response, but uh, lawsuits are not uncommon to authorities. Um, but again, I just wanted to address you know, your concern. It's, it's well taken. It's a mess. No, not really. I wouldn't recommend something if I didn't think it was good for the town of Stratford. Uh, the, I'd like to uh, move on. At this evening, if you were here earlier, we had a domestic violence vigil, which was held this evening at 6 p.m. I'd like to thank the Center for Family Justice and Deb Greenwood for uh, having that vigil out front, um, promoting awareness regarding domestic violence at the home. Uh, this week, we're going to have a police awards ceremony, which will be held Thursday at 5.30 p.m. right here in the council chamber at Town Hall. Uh, Stephanie, just to uh, dovetail on your uh, comments earlier, the Pumpkin Festival will be this Saturday at Booth Park from 1 to 5 p.m., and I hope the weather is as beautiful as it was today, as it hopefully will be on Saturday. Uh, special thanks for our firefighters for hosting an open house at the firehouse this past Saturday. The weather was gorgeous, and uh, it was a huge success. We had a lot, of, a lot of young children over there climbing in trucks and touching them and uh, enjoying the day with our firefighters. Uh, the Stratford Lighthouse will be open for tours this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and is being hosted by the Coast Guard. So if you're not doing it this Saturday, you can go look at the Lighthouse and go to the Pumpkin Festival afterwards. <coughs> the uh, Stratford Senior Services has been selected for the 2015 Excellence in Support of Aging Organization Award by the Southwestern Agency on Aging. I'd like to congratulate Diane Petersky and her staff on a job well done. Our first annual recognition awards for new and expanding companies will be held on October 26th at 5 p.m. at Joey C's Restaurant. And the event is being sponsored by the Town of Stratford, the State Department of Economic and Community Development, and the Bridgeport Regional Business Council. So join us at Joey C's uh, next week, actually on the 26th. Uh, this Friday, the BRBC's Women's Leadership Council is featuring three area women at Tesla's Restaurant, which includes our very own Karen Kaiser from Economic Development, Department. <clears throat> She's going to be in a panel with two other women that are in economic development from the city of Bridgeport and town of Trumbull. The third annual Vicki Soto 5K event will be held on Saturday, November 7th. Re uh, registration begins at 7.30 a.m. and the race starts at 10 a.m. If you're planning on attending this event, I suggest you get there early because it is packed. It's a very successful event. It raises a lot of money. That is, uh, it's November 7th, so come on out and join us. No, it's a ways off, but it's, we're not going to have another council meeting until then. And what I'm going to do tonight, um, just because I've had a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, economic development, I figured I'd give a report tonight during the mayor's report, kind of bring everyone up to speed, and they actually had a meeting tonight, a commission meeting. Um, for grant money for redevelopment, we've been awarded, most of you probably know, but $1,205,000 from the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development to remediate and abate a th approximately a 3.8-acre former public school site at 1000 East Broadway. The town council have voted to accept the money. Next step is a phase three environmental ass assessment, which is very comprehensive, an RFP for contractors to abate and demo this building. The town plans to seek redevelopment opportunities that feature mixed-use, transit-oriented development, which will revitalize Stratford Center. The transit-oriented district, uh, it's a new zoning overlay to Stratford's zoning regulations are actually in effect. In addition, the state of Connecticut Office of Policy and Management has recently announced that the town of Stratford has been awarded a $200,000 transit-oriented development planning grant for a complete streets improvement plan, which will allow the town to further develop transportation choices within the roughly one and a half mile radius around the train station. Proposals have been accepted for the Stratford Center Complete Streets Improvement Plan, which will be funded under the state of Connecticut OPM transit-oriented development planning grant. We received seven proposals and the Greater Bridgeport Regional Council and the town will conduct interviews this month to select a firm to do the work. Skorsky Airport upgrade is moving forward. Main Street has reopened, thank goodness. Uh, the project includes the real realignment of approximately 2,200 linear feet of Connecticut Route 113, Main Street, to accommodate the construction of a runway safety area at the east end of runway 6-24. All the utilities in the area of Route 113 are located underground due to the proximity of the runways, and it actually looks a lot nicer with the telephone poles not being there anymore. Uh, Department of Economic and Community Development from the state of Connecticut also gave us a grant for $2.85 million. By the way, uh, out of that pool of money, there was $27 million. The town of Stratford actually got over 10%. We got the, the lion's share of that grant for the contract plating site. 
the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development, um, in addition to the grant, is used to remediate and demolish the 10 and a half acre contract plating site, which lies also within the Stratford's Transit Oriented District for mixed use slash TOD development. Connecticut Deep Commissioner Rob Clee and also the new Connecticut Deputy Commissioner Tim Sullivan came to Stratford at contract plating for a tour and its brownfield properties. And uh, it was a very successful event. It was also reported in the Connecticut Post. Mercer Coal Tower demolition and grants. Uh, if anyone has driven on Stratford Avenue, you notice that the towers are finally coming down. That only took about five years. Uh, I was very excited to see that happen. And Councilwoman Phillips, I know you were involved with that also, and I'd like, to, I'd like to thank the entire town council for the support of that. Again, cleaning up our brownfields is very important for a number of reasons. Um, they're tax delinquent, but also they're blighted properties that we like to see get cleaned up and be productive again. So we look forward to that, um, that cleanup occurring and the building being removed and going for redevelopment at that site. Stratford Avenue Street, Street, Streetscape project is, work, is uh, in the works right now. Uh, it's going to include Stratford Avenue and Honey Spot Road intersection, and the reason why we're doing streetscapes there is because uh, with the two roads brewery and other development, it's actually become a destination in town, uh, and, which is a good thing. So we're looking to not only clean up the area, but also recognize the fact that it is a gateway to Stratford, and there's a, a lot of opportunity there in getting some of these older properties back into productive use. So we're looking forward to that Stratford Avenue street, street, streetscape project moving forward. I'm getting tongue-tied on that. Uh, the commercial grant list, um, as many of you know, that we did see a drop in the grant list due to property values declining. Uh, the good news is that, you'd say, well, is there really good news? There is. Uh, residential values went down about $119 million, but commercial properties went up $72 million. And that, that's what we've been trying to do, is create more economic stimulus with commercial properties to help shift the tax burden from residential property owners to commercial property owners. And we're actually starting to see that occur, which is a good thing for everyone in town. Uh, in, in 2012, we created a redevelopment agency, which you've heard of before, which is addressing the brownfields in town. Uh, it, the town is also working on uh, tax foreclosures. Uh, prior to this push, the town collected about $350,000 in back taxes just in 2013 alone. Excellent. And in, 20 and four, in 2014 and 2015, the town has collected more than $2 million. Let me repeat that, $2 million in back taxes from property owners and one of them owned about $640,000, and that was the property off of Holly Lane. Also, uh, we did receive $24 million. We didn't receive it, but it was approved for the Exit 33 interchange. Uh, the Connecticut DOT will hold a uh, public informational uh, meeting in Stratford per, per request of Milford Mayor Ben Blake. It's a courtesy to the Mayor of Milford. An economic study conducted by Connecticut DOT shows no impact of businesses in the Devon section of Milford. The full interchange plans at exit 33 on Interstate 95 are progressing as funding for the project was unanimously approved by the Greater Bridgeport and Valley Metropolitan Planning Organization. The approval by the Metropolitan Planning Organization provides a $24 million in funding for various phases of the project with construction projected to begin in 2017-2018. 576 600 East Broadway, this is a Superfund site that it was actually foreclosed on by the Town of Stratford. An RFP has gone out for developers, one, re one replied. The South Sea was the developer and the only one that actually applied. The EPA is working on a site plan that will include redevelopment and reuse of this property, which has been delinquent and fallow for years. Uh, there is a study going on on Route 10. <clears throat> the Greater Bridgeport Regional Council in the town of Stratford is conducting a traffic study on Main Street on Route 10, which is funded by Connecticut DOT. The purpose will be to look at ways to ease current and future traffic flow in the area of Sikorsky Aircraft, not Sikorsky Airport, Sikorsky Aircraft, and Riders Landing over by the Merritt Parkway. A number of meetings have already taken place with the Technical Committee and the Community Advisory Panel. Meetings were held with Sikorsky Aircraft, Riders Landing, and other businesses. Proposed plans based on those meetings were presented to the advisory panels later this month. The, the main objective is to actually ease traffic flow in that area. If you drive through there, especially when the plant is getting out, um, it's very congested, particularly around rush hour and uh, during shift changes. The town of Stratford has worked with Stratford companies, connecting them with the state of Connecticut's Department of Economic and Community Development to secure more than $3 million in business express grants and loans. This program has helped create more than 100 jobs for Stratford and retain more than 450. The Department of Economic and Community Development in the state of Connecticut worked with four companies on the job expansion tax credit program to also create new jobs in Stratford total of 18 within the last two years. 
A new business, uh, the points draft for redevelopment, uh, we're still moving forward. The Army Corps of Engineers is doing an analysis of the data. They are now engaged in a process to help get an agreement between the state deep and the Department of Defense, which is the Pentagon. Uh, they're supposed to be done with their analysis in a couple months. DCED has awarded the town $200,000 for the assessment of this brownfield property. Ross and Roberts on West Broad Street, this site has been officially listed with commercial brokers. There are a number of interested developers for the property. The current owners have completed phase one and phase two environmental assessments and will conduct cleanup, which is estimated at a half a million dollars. Hoy Lane, there's a new medical building going up. It's in, uh, construction has begun for a brand new building in front of the big Y. Saugatuck Kitchen has moved to Stratford. Uh, they just purchased 125 Bruce Avenue, previously owned by Nova Pasta. They're also a food manufacturer. It seems like we have a little niche here with breweries and, uh, and food manufacturers. Uh, they will bring 20 new jobs to Stratford. They purchased the property for $3 million. The Federal Express Distribution Center, a Stratford land development, has sold its property in the Stratford Executive Park, lo located off of Lord Strip Boulevard, for over $19 million. Uh, the town received about $50,000 in conveyance tax from that sale. The new owners of the property will build a 225,000 square foot building, at least the Federal Express expanding in Stratford. They have received approval for tax abatement from this town council, and FedEx will create 68 new jobs and retain 85 jobs right here in Stratford. Hoy Lane property, this is the property I mentioned earlier. The town of Stratford has paid six, uh, the town of Stratford has received $640,000 in back taxes. Uh, with a foreclosure sales date pending by the town, the taxes were paid finally. The developer is in the process of purchasing uh, the property from the current owners. They have plans for condominiums and a restaurant on the property located behind 99 Holly Lane. Now, this is more than a 20-acre property. I believe it's approximately 30 acres. A lot of it is wetlands, which obviously can't be developed. 2009 Main Street, it's the Christ Church parking lot across from the Episcopal Church. Zoning has approved the plan for an apartment building for the property. This will include about 40 units of one and two bedrooms. Castor Moving Company has expanded in Stratford. They purchased an industrial building for $5.15 million from Stratford Land Development. This purchase is to offer storage solutions to the moving company. The 87,150 square foot space is on 400 Long Beach Boulevard. Boulevard. Castor Moving Company has 40 employees. As far as restaurants, a lease has been signed for a new restaurant, the former Little Moe's. It's actually open now. It's an American family restaurant called Maxwell's. If you get a chance, if you haven't already, please visit them and support them. 1019 Main Street, this property has been sold. The developer has cleared a lot and plans to build a 10-unit condominium at the site. He has presented his plan to zoning, is awaiting a decision. This is the, the, the property across from Deluca Field. And where? Uh, Deluca Field. Oh, Deluca it's, it's Field. Yeah. It's been on the market for a while. Thirteen fifty Barnum Avenue, it's a vacant lot by Cutravellos has been sold. Construction has begun, it's it's entering its final stages. Advanced auto parts are coming there. Uh, it's a new six thousand square foot building over by Salernos. Rexel, a global leader in the distribution of electrical supplies and services, has moved from Access Road to four eighty Lordship Boulevard. It's the former Gamma building. Rexel operates in uh, thirty eight countries with a network of some two thousand two hundred branches. A distribution network of more than 40 uh, banners and, and employs over 30,000 people. Rexel sales were 13.1 billion in 2014. Councilwoman Phillips and I were uh, at the American Institute of Health and Technology last week. Uh, this school came to Stratford in 2012 in a small facility with two instructors and eight students. Today they moved to a new facility in town at 480 Lordship Boulevard. They now have 10 instructors that have graduated over 150 students. Uh, they had a grand opening on October 9th last week, so we welcomed them into the community. Joey C's Restaurant, looks like we finally have a restaurant at the Doc Shopping Center that has uh, some bite. Uh, it's open here, and it's over near BJ's. Uh, this is their second location. Um, it's actually known as Joey C's Boathouse because it's on the water. Uh, so we welcome them here in Stratford. They've created 60 jobs at that one location just here in town. The Lazy Dog is a new restaurant opening the end of October at the former Siena site on Main Street, right here at Station House Square. The owner of this new restaurant is the former owner of The Field, which was in Black Rock in Bridgeport. This will be a family restaurant. Fitness Edge is moving to the Dock Shopping Center and taking over the, the Staples vacant spot. A lease has been si signed. Uh, no timeline is, is on the, is, uh, has been given to us right now. 
uh, but they are working on the facility. Uh, the owners of 99 Bearsley Avenue are looking for a new tenant for the space off I-95. 7-Eleven uh, building on Barnum Avenue, the former 7-Eleven building, uh, it, it was closed for a while. I believe that 7-Eleven actually pulled the franchise from the, uh, the owner of that store. But the good news is the new convenience store has signed a lease and has taken over the former uh, location on Barnum Avenue. It is a 10-year lease. Popeye's Chicken, uh, the chain is currently uh, in court with the Town of Stratford Zoning Commission for denying its application to come to Stratford at the Dock Shopping Center. They received zoning approvals from the Zoning Board of Appeals and have signed a deal with Erstat Biddle. That's pending in court. A AAA, which is near and dear to some of our folks here this evening, um, this project is also in the courts. A decision from the courts is expected in October. AAA did plan to build a 13,000 square foot building for offices and a garage and for its fleet on Ferry Boulevard. 60 Beach Road, uh, for some of you that have been here for a while, it's the old Allen's East across from Marnix. The developer has met with economic development and zoning about a, a new potential re restaurant being at that location. Uh, they're in the process of working out details with the current owner. owner. The former uh, roller skating re rink, also next to Marnix on Washington Parkway, a developer has purchased the property and the plan is to build residential condominiums. Uh, he has not finalized his plan, but he has cleaned up the property. LA Fitness has signed a lease with Bricksmore Properties over by Marshalls. Uh, they're in the process of completing that. Work has, as you see, has begun at the site. Uh, the building department has approved a permit for the fitness center, which includes a pool and basketball courts. This is at 411 Barnum Avenue cutoff, uh, the former location of the Stratford Movie Theater. LA Fitness hopes, hopes to open by the end of this year. 1717 Barnum Avenue, it's the old budget rental, has been sold. The new owner has purchased the property next door, which is an older red house, and he wants to demolish the current building and build a new retail center doing an assemblage of both parcels. And that's also across from the, uh, the Ale House uh, establishment over on uh, Barnum Avenue. Connecticut Distributors is expanding its business in Stratford. Construction is completed on the 50,000 square foot addition to the building on Lordship Boulevard. Town and state officials will, will be attending a ribbon cutting next Monday, which is October 19th. CDI will be creating 17 jobs with this expansion. Just an important note, we, we've, we found out that they needed to expand and they were actually looking outside of town to relocate their facility. We were proactive with that. We actually met with the president and had a discussion with him and were able to keep him in town and keep those jobs. So it's good that CDI stayed. Um, some new companies that came to Stratford, uh, Unicare, Kirby Carpet Cleaners, Norwalk Powder Metals, Cobra Electronics, Versa Media, Norcedia, LA Barnaby are all new businesses in Stratford in the past year, bringing with them more than 300 jobs. Four cities, or 1111 Stratford Avenue, their 128-unit apartment complex is leased. There's a waiting list. Avalon Bay Apartments in the north end of town, just north of the Merritt Parkway, uh, they are also currently fully leased. The Exxon gas station on Stratford Avenue um, has demolished the building to, uh, to remedy contamination. Once Exxon concludes remediation of the property, they will be selling the property. Uh, there has been a lot of interest in it. And uh, the town of Stratford knows of one uh, who is uh, actually a cash buyer that would like to purchase that site. The Exxon Mobil on uh, Lordship Boulevard, the property is still available for lease. Uh, we've met with and actually uh, traveled to New York to meet the owner who owns Broadway Stage, uh, which is, uh, his name is Anthony Argento, but those of you that like Madam Secretary and Blue Bloods, uh, he's the owner of that production studio. And uh, he actually bought this parcel in Stratford with another parcel in Brooklyn, which he needed to expand his production studio. Um, he's a nice guy. Um, he, he plans on holding on to the property and is looking for a user right now. Our meeting with him went very well. It's a 19-acre uh, site, and it has a lot of potential. Um, we did contact Stu Leonard's about potentially moving here, uh, but right now uh, they're not interested. They're expanding in Long Island right now, but maybe at a future time we could contact them. Paradise Green Retail Space, uh, the Allstate has opened up an office in the new building at 3651 Main Street in Paradise Green. This is across from the Sitting Duck Restaurant. It's a 6,000 square foot building, so we're, see we're glad to see that a tenant has arrived there. And also, um, the State of Connecticut Department of Economic Development invited the town of Stratford on uh, September 24th, 24th to go to Mohegan Sun. We were one of 10 towns to do a presentation on our brownfields, and it was, uh, the, the properties were contract plating in Stratford Center. <clears throat> but we were honored to be there, and uh, the fact that the state of Connecticut is giving us the time to help promote some of the properties, our brownfields in town, and to meet with developers, I think was a big uh, feather in our cap, and again, it's allowing us the opportunity to talk about Stratford outside of Stratford, 
but to give a presentation about all the opportunities we have here right in our community. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I think I'm done. Oh. You've been busy. We have been, but I wanted to get it all out, so hey. I just figured I like that. No, no, thank you for that. And, uh, and uh, also, do you, have any, do you have any appointments while you're... Uh, <laughs> None at this time, but I, can, <laughs> I can't believe you want me to speak after yeah. that. I, I just <laughs> but one comment, I'd like to thank our economic development team, both uh, Amy Knorr and Karen Kaiser. Uh, they've been doing a great job, and uh, you know, they, they mitigate a lot of things that never make the paper and you never hear about, and that's the reality of it. And the, and the one thing I'll tell you is that we're doing a lot here in town, despite the fact we're in a state that's in a region that's not competitive. And the fact we're able to keep businesses and see businesses move here is a credit to everyone in our community. I know I can speak for the rest of our council members that we're we're happy to see that this much economic development coming on the town also. So keep up the good work. Thank Thanks, you, Mr. Care. Chairman. So All right, move on to um, committee reports. Short Beach Commission um, looking for a batting cage on the Short Beach complex. Mr. Poisson, can you speak no, Mr. Mr. Santi. Oh, Mr. Santi. Yeah, yeah uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the um, <clears throat> Stratford Little League came before the Short Beach Commission, um, which I chaired. Uh, for Mr. Massey, and they have a plan to build a batting cage, uh, which they're going to pay for and maintain. <coughs> uh, it was uh, Chad Esposito was there. He uh, looked over the plans and suggested we move forward with approval for uh, the option two, which I believe was uh, distributed to council members. So they're going to purchase uh, you know, all the materials, and then they're, they're going to build it. So, okay. uh, so I want to make a motion to uh, accept that. Okay, so we accept the um, findings of the Short Beach Commission for a batting cage. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Second, Mr. Connor. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes for it. Unanimous. Uh, the second is um, also from the Short Beach Commission, Mr. Santi, yeah, um, to lower the non-resident golf fees. Yeah, there was a discussion. Um, resident uh, residential uh, rates are up for the golf course, but apparently, um, to keep with the more competitive thing that was discussed, we should probably lower our rates and be a little bit more competitive. You know, the Short Beach golf course is on the up and up. <coughs> We're investing a lot of time and money into it. So to keep rates competitive, we recommended to uh, the council to lower, and I'd like to make a motion to approve. Uh, we wrote lower non-resident golf fees for weekdays, $16, and on the weekends, $18. Okay. We have a second on that? Second. Second, Mr. Catalano. Any discussion? Just a question. Ms. Phillips? Yeah, it's a question to Mr. Santi. Um, was there any discussion at the Short Beach Commission about trying to look at reducing some of the costs or address the deficit that it's been running? Well, they did, they did discuss uh, some of the deficit issues, but, you know, the golf, because the road was closed, hurt business there. So what people are doing now, we noticed the drop-off in some of the non-residents. And, you know, to stay competitive, we want to attract those people back by lowering the fees. <coughs> so the deficit, we do subsidize a little bit out of the tax base you know, each year. So it's not going to be an enterprise that's going to make money. It's here. If you're break even one year, it's, it's a good thing. But it is on the up and up, and it is the de deficit is slowly going down. So there were no, no specific changes of reducing your expenses at all? We didn't look at that. That's for a couple of at a later date. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of the um, motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? Right. Chair votes yes. Uh, unanimous. Uh, town Attorney's Report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 5.3.1 uh, Claims Report. We don't have anything uh, to report this month. Uh, we have a lot of things that are close to resolution, so I anticipate probably next month we'll have a claims report. 5.3.2, uh, I can tell you that the Attorney General's Office is still in the process of circulating uh, a proposal within the various departments of the state to have to sign off on it before they can actually approach us with it. So I think that matter should stay on the table because I just don't have anything to provide you with tonight. 5.3.3, uh, the next step on that uh, process is to sit down with a contract with uh, this body uh, and review 
sort of what my best guess is as to what this body might be looking for, responses to that guess from the uh, uh, from Stratford Sage Group, uh, and then uh, to sort of consolidate all the uh, requirements that you give to me to put into that document into a document. I think that's a working session that's probably a minimum of a couple of hours, uh, and I would want uh, a week or two lead time if I could, when I know you're going to do that, to give you a document that you can actually review and, and we can come to the meeting sort of prepared to talk about it. There's a lot of work there. Uh, so I would recommend it stay on the table tonight, and then if, if you could, just give me a little lead time on when that matter. Could we um, have this ready for, say, two weeks from now? Yes, it would probably take me a week from now to get you a document that's in a, a, a sort of a, an organized enough form for it to be useful to you in deciding, you know, or formulating questions or making a determination of what elements of the document you're in favor of and which ones you're opposed to. Um, and if you felt like a week was enough time to read that document, then yeah, absolutely. Um, so we could, we could do a special meeting, hopefully towards the, uh, the end of October? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will get that document in, in a, not final form, but form for you to be able to use it. It's useful form, maybe, is a good way to say it. And, uh, you know, schedule whenever you think it's appropriate. Okay. I'll, but, I'll, I'll try to put, I'll make that my high priority. Mr. Right. Mr. Chairman, on that yeah. same topic, what's the likelihood that we'll have all the information and we'll be able to come to an agreement and sign a document by, I guess, our last council meeting, which is in November or December, the new council is sworn in. So let me, uh, if I can answer your question with information, and maybe it, it helps. Uh, the document that I have that I've been working off is, is the old Haney Agreement. And then I took the proposal from SSG and I tried to pull the things out of that that seemed to be fundamental to what they were trying to do plug those in where appropriate in the Haney Agreement, take things out of the Haney Agreement that didn't look like they applied to that type of proposal. Um, and then I, I shared that with their attorney so that I knew if this was, uh, if we were on the right track, because really it's all guesswork on my part as to what you might be interested in seeing in an agreement like that, what type of deal you wanted. The, um, well, I have their comments to uh, most of that, not all of it. Um, I've compiled a lot of those into a document. Um, what I haven't done is I haven't um, sort of done some of the extra research on other venues to see how they're treating some of those issues that are identified. And it's really because I'm not sure if these are issues for you or not. Mm -hmm. So if we had a meeting, let's say in two weeks, uh, and we went through the entire document and generally you felt like the, the guesses I made were good guesses and we're on track, and the Stratford Stage Group people were uh, of, of the same mind. Uh, I see a few, I see some stumbling blocks in this deal as it is right now. I don't know, I don't know how big a stumbling block they are, whether they're for you or for them. Um, but assuming that those stumbling blocks are minimal, then you could really, uh, at almost any time, decide that you want to uh, go forward and authorize the agreement. The, Okay. So, so it really depends on what comes out of that next working session, but it could be right away, or you may find you're really far apart. And, and that's fine. I, I'm not trying to speed it or slow it. Most of this has been on their delay of getting it together. I just want to make sure that we do our due diligence and don't feel pressured to, into something because the clock is ticking. I think the next council uh, we'll do an app job as well, whether we do it or they do it. I'm not really worked up about it either way. I just want to make sure we do a thorough due diligence. You have the time to do your research. We have the time to review it. And we're not trying to just push something through because of an election. Okay. That's all. So, so I guess that matter stays on the table? We'll keep it on the table. Then. Okay. All right, um, 179 West Ave, uh, we have really been trying hard to get us in a position where um, we could say to you, here's the status of negotiations and here's um, what we recommend as your next step in the negotiations. Um, part of that requires the current property owner to respond to, you know, information and appraisals and things we've been trying to work with the, with the owner. We're just not, we don't have a response from the owner that I think enables us to take another step forward today. And I'm, 
Yeah, we're pushing. I want, we really are working on this. I know it's a high priority for some of you. I just can't move it forward at this point without the property owner also being engaged. Mr. Santhi? Well, I'd like to uh, take it into executive session to discuss what we're, you know, what the options, because I think we could move forward with this. I don't think it's that much off. So you could, um, I can tell you where the negotiations are, mm -hmm. um, and we can talk about our strategy in those negotiations, and you could make a determination that. Yeah, I don't think it's outrageously that far off, so. Okay, I'm, well, if that's something you want to do, because we're talking about negotiations to acquire real property, mm -hmm. and, and doing those negotiations in public could certainly affect yes. the price you end up paying. So I would recommend that you uh, make a motion to take, take it off the table, and then once it's off the table, someone should make okay. a motion to take it into executive session, um, sort of using the language that's in, on the agenda, okay. to include town attorney's office, attorney Bruce Jackson, who's handling that matter for us, the mayor, the mayor's chief of staff, um, the finance director, the chief administrative officer, town council, uh, I said the town attorney's office, I believe. Yes. Um, I don't think I've, have I left anybody? I don't think I've left anybody out. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to take it off the table, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to take uh, 5.3.4 off the table. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Dempsey. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. 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 So we right. tough crowd tonight. Four four. Do we have the roll call vote on that? Ms. Phillips? Nay. Nay. Aye. Cynthia? Aye. Mr. Poisson? Nay. Nay. Aye. Motion fails. And the, uh, vote the chairman votes aye. 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 All right. We're going to executive session. No. 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 Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, we just take it off the table. I'm sorry. Now yeah, we need I, a, a motion. Mr. To, Mr. Chairman, I like I, to go. I think we need a supermajority. I believe the mayor would have to break a tie. Mayor, voted, I think you need, mayor voted yay. Yep. And I believe you need two thirds of the body to vote in the affirmative to go into executive session. We haven't got that far though. We just took it off the table. I know. Let's just take it off the table. This is a project that is going to stall drainage. It's built. This and it's going to hurt the residents. Right here, man. Because it's first fire. There's the ass. Too much. Have a great laugh. I don't see why we can't discuss it. We don't have to take action on it. Tim just, Tim, Tim just, Tim told us what the update was. Why are we going into the site? Up. Can we pass this and uh, I'm going to hand the book to Attorney Floor to look at Yes, we'll, we'll come back to this. <coughs> All right. Renewal of uh, license agreement for the Red Devil Booster Club. This is something we do every year. I'd like uh, to make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. By second. Second by Mr. Forrester. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes yes. Past your name. What about it? Do we have coffee in the back? He's working on it. <coughs> so, you know, he's Five point three point six Turner contract with Stratford. I'm going to ask Mr. Uh, Llewellyn to stop up, uh, step, step up to the uh, podium. He's the uh, 
uh, chairman of our subcommittee uh, for Stratford High School. Alan Llewellyn, 949 Huntington Road. Um, basically, what this is, is this is um, the authorization for the mayor to sign the contract for pre-construction services. Um, that's in the amount of $195,000 covering a 14-month design development period. Anybody have any uh, questions for uh, Mr. Uh, Llewellyn? Ms. Phillips? Not really questions. Um, I think it's something we should approve, and I'm supporting it. I just want to be clear that unless things have changed, we are accepting the 195000 under the town's funding and our authority until we get the final bond approval from the state. I just want to be sure about we're all in the same agreement on that. Yeah, that's correct. And this, um, this contract would be limited to just the pre-construction phase. And should Turner carry through and continue to be our construction manager, the um, agreement would then get amended to include the construction phase. Right. At the same time, if we don't get the bond approved next year, we are on the hook for this as well, correct? Correct. Under the same parameters which we talked about two months ago when we did those other two approvals. I'm in support that we should take that risk and that we should accept the pre-construction costs um, with the caveat knowing that it will get final approval. We expect it to get approval in the next year's legislative budget. If we don't pass this right now, it will set the whole project back a year considerably more. And we do have the funding already approved, at least in the first phase of fu funding that we did two years ago. I agree with you, Ms. Phillips. So would you like to make a motion to, um, or is there any other uh, discussion on the? Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the, pre the uh, request for the pre-construction funding for Turner Construction. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Mr. Dempsey, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Um, Mr. Catalano is out, so it's 7-0. Uh, Mr. Connor's out, Mr. too. Connors. Oh, Mr. Connor's out. Three, four, five, six. Come on, Jim. Mr. Connor, would you vote? <coughs> we need a vote on the uh, Stratford High School. Uh, yes. Yes, so 7-0. Yay. All right, 5.3.7 Long Fork Park uh, Skating Rink, uh, proposed by the uh, Wilcox and Fathers Club. Uh, I would like to send this over to uh, Parks and Rec Committee and also Long Fork Park Commission to discuss and uh, trying to iron out any details that needs to be, and hopefully we get this back by um, next council meeting. Does anybody have any? Uh, so move. I would take some uh, discussion on the first. I, I would like to see this go to Parks and Rec, but I'm also concerned about the timing. And I'm fine if we want to give some pre-approval or at least a vote of support um, on the conditions that I've heard so far, so that if Parks and Rec does approve it and works out the conditions of the um, skating rink, it can move along and you could work directly with the Fathers Club if you so choose to do so. Well, I mean, there's issues, especially with the uh, insurance and liability, Mr. Bishop, right, on this um, skate rink? The, yeah, so there are issues on um, liability. We could talk about it now or we could talk about it when it comes back from that commission, which that committee, whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to hear some of it now. I'd like to say a couple comments about that. I mean, listen, you know, the, the same liability occurs whether kids are playing lacrosse down there, kids are playing soccer, kids are playing softball. There should not be some new thing, right? It's athletics. You know, there's no difference between kids skating on one of our town ponds and then scouting on a rink. The one thing I do want to mention here, because it wasn't written here, is that the Longwood Parks Commission did pass on a favorable recommendation for this project. I know it's something the uh, Wilcox and Fathers have been working on or trying to work on for two years now, and uh, I'd really like to see us get out of our own way and make it happen. Shouldn't be that difficult. So, Mr. Chair, are you looking for me to just give you kind of a, a rough rundown on liability and right? Those type yes. Of issues? Okay. So, generally speaking, some of the other activities that you talked about, let's say lacrosse, 
soccer, anything like that. <laughs> if you're talking about the condition of a uh, sort of a, uh, a natural condition of the land, um, you have much, much less liability for something that happens there than you do an activity that happens on a man-made structure. So things like skate parks and ice skating rinks are the two that you read about all the time because you're creating the structure and they require a certain level of maintenance that ground doesn't require necessarily. Um, you do have a higher exposure. It doesn't mean you don't do it. It doesn't mean there isn't a way to manage it. it how, about, how about if we put a sign that says skate at your own risk? So that's signage is one of the ways that people manage uh, liability. I did some research on this anticipating the question. What most communities seem to be doing uh, is one of two things. They either purchase an insurance policy that covers, in particular, an ice skating rink. Um, I, we could look into doing that or you could look into doing that. The other thing they do, and it's something Stratford did when we had the skate park down at Short Beach, is that you contract with another entity, an outside entity, um, to essentially manage and operate it, and they have the liability, um, which they usually will handle by having insurance. Some of these entities, for example, the YMCA, they may have the coverage already built into um, their programming because they do certain activities. You know, they have a pool, for example. Sterling, Sterling House might be another one because they, they do a lot of things. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you the things that you need to think about, but I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm just telling you. Just, just in a couple of response on that, the YMCA initially took the responsibility for the skating park, mm -hmm. and then they gave it up, and it came back to the town under the recreation department, and it resided there for most of the time okay. until it was taken down. And then the other example is up at Booth Park, we have a climbing wall, man-made. It's a climbing wall and for little kids, and it's been there for some time. We don't even have signage, not that I'm advocating somebody to go out there and break their neck, but We've had it there for many, many years, and we've accepted that. So I don't want to create a separate condition for this outside of what we've been doing all along. And I would like to see this move forward and not hold this up further unless there are some other real details that need to be worked out in terms of how the park is open, when it's closed, who's going to maintenance, things like that. But the liability issue, I understand, but I don't want to create a second tier different than what we've been doing for other parks and other arrangements. Okay, and you, you have that right to do that. I'm just telling you, you know, but things that I think you need to know. Okay. But you certainly have the right to decide, you know, we'll take that liability or we'll look into insurance or we'll pass it off or whatever. Yeah. Now, the, uh, did you see the, uh, the rest of the questions on this, Mr. Bishop? Um, uh, did you get a chance to look at that? Oh. And I'll ask the rest of the council members if they uh, had a chance to look this over. I mean, we could, if, if you think this is feasible, take a vote on it tonight to approve. Sure. Uh, well, so I can, if you want, I can share with you the comments that the Public Works Department had. That's the only party I've actually spoken with. I did get an email today, the same one I think most of you got, with some information on it. Um, they're all appropriate for the town council to make a determination on. They're not, you know, you don't have to get sure. public works approval. You can decide to do this. Um, public works is uh, questioning lights, whether, whether we want to install lights, um, and then if we do, who pays for it. They're questioning snow removal because the club that wants to donate the rink can't commit absolutely all the time to being able to clear the snow. They're looking for help from the town. You could decide to give them that help. It's up to you. They're looking for public works is looking to understand who's responsible for maintenance of the rink. Um, liability we talked about. Um, public works is looking to understand who would be scheduling the event. So if somebody wanted to rent it out for a party or some sort of a athletic event or something, they want to know who would be doing that. Um, and they mentioned that you don't want to have the rink installed um, before Thanksgiving because they need that area for parking. So they say after Thanksgiving. Right, they want after Thanksgiving, right. Where I'm at is... Guys, I'm sure Mr. it's fine. It's not Mr. Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to do is to make a motion to give them 
uh, conditional approval from the town council pending the approval from the Parks and Recs Department. Those are all reasonable questions that really fall within the Parks and Rec Department, you know, Parks and Rec Committee, which can be worked out without it coming back to the council. Um, if the Parks and Recs Committee is satisfied with those answers, I would hate to see it have to come back here for our approval. So I'm quite happy to make a motion to move it forward based on those conditions. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, Councilwoman Phillips. I think uh, going through the punch list of questions and getting answers to the Parks and Rec Committee is satisfied. This project's been pending for two years, and uh, I can understand the frustration of the council members. I just, if you don't mind, I'd like to also ask that um, we reach out to some insurance carriers just to get some prices on insurance, yeah. and it's up to the council whether they want to do it or not, but at least it's an option. You've investigated it. And, we, and there's several insurance companies that handle that that we've used for other things as well. But I would like to take a positive attitude of let's try to make this happen rather than delaying it and finding every look and cranny right. that needs to be worked out no. beforehand. Right, just as long as we know who maintains the liability, whether it's a. Okay. Thank you. All right, so any other there's discussion? A there's a motion before. But it was never seconded. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a motion. I'll make a formal motion to accept the proposal, conditional on the review of insurance and also the approval of the Parks and Rec Committee. Okay. Do I have a second? I second that. Second, second by Mr. Forrester. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, when is the next scheduled Parks and Rec Committee? The 28th. Okay. So really, we could also bring it back to this on the uh, second Monday of November, too. So. Which is prior to Thanksgiving. Right. Perfect. Um, Mr. Bishop, can you, that list of questions that you had from Public Works? Yeah. Can uh, you have a contact for the, um, the people putting together with the, uh, the uh, Wilcoxon Fathers Club? Yeah, I can. I, 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 so what I can do is if between now and, and when that next that meeting is, I can write up the Public Works questions that they had. I can forward those to the contact people from the Fathers Club. I can forward them to um, the Parks and Rec Committee. Okay. Um, and uh, I can ask somebody from Public Works to attend the meeting of, of that committee so that they can have their input directly. We, we, so we have a member of uh, Virgil's here from the uh, Wilcox and Fathers Club, so I don't know if you need a, yeah, maybe any contact information. He's still here, so. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, chair votes yes. Uh, passes 8-0. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to request five-minute recess, please. Sure. Can we have a five-minute recess? Back from uh, our recess. I want to go back to uh, 5.3.4179 West Avenue. Uh, Mr. Bishop. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in this particular instance, on the motion to table where the vote was for in favor of the motion, for against the motion, the mayor doesn't have the ability to break a tie. Um, there's, uh, under some circumstances, the mayor can break a 5-5 tie, but he has no authority to break a 4-4 tie under either the council rules of procedure or the uh, charter. So the motion fails. So the mo motion fails and we'll leave it on the table for now. Right. Okay. All right, we're back down to um, 7.1. Um, Army engine plant, Mr. Mayor. I, I already gave a report on that in my uh, mayor's comments. Okay. Oh. Hey, oh, did I, did I forget something? Oh, I'm sorry. Questions to the town attorney. Five point three four eight. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, Ms. Phillips. Listen to everything. Yeah. Thank you. Just to catch up on a couple of things. Last month I asked about the FOI results from training, and you said that it wasn't yet completed. You were waiting for final action. Now I understand we have final action. What is the next steps with this FOI violation? If you can bring me up to date. Sure. The, um, uh, the law firm that we hired 
to represent us in that case, uh, at the end of that case, um, I believe is talking to the Commission about the specific parameters of that training. Uh, it may be something they do for us, it may be something that the staff for the FOIC does, but that training will occur once they've determined what the parameters of that training are going to be. Is it going to occur before we leave, or is this going to be something left for the new council? I don't know. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm, not, I'm really not directly involved in the FOI stuff, so I don't know. Is it that complicated? It's, um, it's, I wouldn't say it's overly complicated. The problem is there's such an incredible volume of Freedom of Information Act requests um, and the information that's being requested. So it used to be back, um, it used to be we get a little tick up when you come around to an election season for whatever reason. Um, but it was all stuff that I could kind of do and it wasn't all that, that complicated or involved. In the last eight months or so, maybe maybe a little longer, um, there's just been a, a real increase. For example, just today alone, I think we got three requests. Some of them are very complicated. They're not always easy to understand what people are asking for. The information that they're looking for isn't always where they're asking for it to be. Um, and then you have to review that information depending on what it is and make sure that it's actually you complied with the request and all that. It's a lot of work and as these things build up, just it's beyond my ability to do that and the other things I'm doing for the town, so I had to outsource it. I think that, okay, that kind of leads me into my second question, my last one. Um, George has been asking to get a status on his FOI update. If I'm saying this correctly, he felt he needed to go to court or bring his case up for hearing. I'm getting this not fully, but the short of it is is that he's felt that he's had several FOI requests that have not been responded to and he hasn't heard anything of it or justification why they couldn't be fulfilled. Do you know what he's talking about? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, the, so I don't look at the Freedom of Information requests any longer because we hired somebody else to do that. When the volume got to a point where I wasn't able to keep up with it, I just kind of did it like in my spare time, sort of a freebie back then. Um, but it became really so much that, that I couldn't handle it on that basis. So what we did is we hired a law firm that represents a number of Connecticut municipalities, big and small. Uh, often before the Freedom of Information Commission and, and told them, look, we want to follow the law, we want to do everything right, and we want to be consistent in our approach to these. So we're not only internally consistent here in Stratford, but we're consistent with what other municipalities are doing. Whatever it is that they're recommending we do, I'm not going to second guess it because they're the experts in this area. Just like, you know, you go in and see a doctor, you, you know, you don't substitute your opinion for theirs. Um, so I know that there are one or two requests that Mr. Mulligan feels that he should receive something he thinks he's entitled to. They're in a disagreement. That's what the Freedom of Information Commission is for. Um, Mr. Mulligan will find it's a very friendly tribunal for him to go to and present his case. Um, and, but, but other than that, I don't know what he's asking for because I don't read them. I don't know what we've provided because I don't get involved in that anymore. So if I was to repeat it back, Mr. Mulligan has had a response. Oh, yes. And that response was that they did not feel the town, the representatives of the town, did not feel that the town is obligated to fulfill that request. And as a result, Mr. Mulligan felt that he needed to go to at least a hearing to have his uh, concerns heard by another authority. I believe that it's, it's in the ballpark. I think they may have said for some items that there's a charge associated with getting the information. I think for other items, they may have said that it's not a proper thing to request under the Freedom of Information Act. Um, they may have provided them with other information. I'm not, I'm not sure. But because it, it, you wouldn't, it, it would be atypical to make a request for, let's say, seven different items to have the same reason apply to all seven items. Usually, it's different. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Mr. Catalano. I'm good. Mr. Dempsey. Mr. No, Boyce. No, sir. Mr. Forrester. Nothing. Mr. Connor. Nothing. I have nothing. Uh, move on to Army Engine Plant, which the mayor has already answered our questions. Yes. Uh, tabled items. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh. Questions to the mayor. Oh, questions to I'm sorry. Boy. I need stronger glasses. 
<laughs> Questions to the mayor. Mr. Catalano. I'm good. Mrs. Ms. Phillips. Mr. Dempsey. None. Mr. Poisson. No, sir. Uh, Mr. Forrester. Nothing. Mr. Connor. Nothing. The chair has nothing. Thank you. I figure you talk too much already, so. Apparently I wore you down. <laughs> Um, now we're at tabled items none, tabled ordinances and resolutions, uh, 7.3.1, ordinance amending uh, for the uh, fats, oils, and grease pretreatment. I think that's, we're saying that, leaving that on the table. Uh, tabled appointments, does anybody have anything on the rest of page four or the top of page five? No. Nothing? Down to um, ordinances and resolutions, 8.1, um, the ordinance amending 88-5, uh, EMS committee. Uh, Mr. Forrester. Motion to refer to Second that. Second by Mr. Catalano. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass it, pass it unanimously. Uh, 8.2. Uh, article uh, 15 miscellaneous abatements. Um, Make a motion to forward to ordinance. Second. Second by Mr. Forrester. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That's a 7.70. Um, ordinance regular meeting adjournment uh, times. Make a motion to forward the ordinance. ordinance. Second. Second by Mr. Forrester. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Ms. Phillips. I'd like to add my name as one of the sponsors. This was one of the ordinances that I wrote. Okay. And uh, I just make yeah, I'd just like to thank Councilwoman Phillips for doing that and giving consideration towards uh, holidays regarding meetings. It's helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and I also think it's a good idea because it comes a little confusion that if there's a holiday and do we have a meeting, do we don't have a meeting, so, all right. Um, all in favor of sending this uh, to ordinance? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Oh, yeah. Zero. Oh, Next is the Port Secur uh, Security uh, Grant Program. Do we have someone here to uh, Mr. Explain? Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Oh. We don't even need it. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, yes. um, I think we skipped over an appointment. Um, the Housing Authority? No. No. No, no. no. no not tonight. No. Okay. Appointment oh, schedule next, during the next section. Oh, right. Uh, 8.5 uh, resolution assistance to firefighters grant program. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Forrester. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, 8.6, the resolution master municipal agreement for right of way project. Um, I think we need a, That's me, yeah. a little ex explanation. Yes, Mr. certainly. Bishop. So the state of Connecticut, uh, you may recall we dealt with a master municipal yeah. agreement for construction of transportation John. improvements. Um, this is a uh, an add-on to that, it, it, it really handles the situation where DOT takes, uh, acquires a right-of-way as part of a transportation project. It's a separate agreement. There are different things in it. The bottom line, the thing you need to know is that if you want DOT to do a project that includes them getting a right-of-way, such as the West Broad Street project, um, and you want them to fund that project, you have to sign this agreement. A number of other municipalities have. This is our first instance where we're dealing with that situation. Um, but if you're going to, if you want DOT to fund the project, you have to agree to their agreement. Freezing. Oh, okay. What an arm twist. Yeah, I know. Um, we have a motion uh, to approve this uh, resolution. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Forrester. Any discussion? So, Mr. Bishop, this is basically about the uh, West Broad Street project right now, though, right? It, right, but this this agreement will apply. It's just like the other one to every other right of way project with DOT going forward. For one year, for it, it goes on infinitely, but really, it's until they change their mind and give us a new okay. agreement. That's that, really that's the, the part that I don't like. Yeah. Is yeah. that we're automatically giving them the right of way if if they want to fund if we want them to fund a project, we have to agree to give them the right of way. All right, or provide a right-of-way? 
uh, yeah, so they'll be paying for a right of way usually, typically as part of the project. It's usually on a, on a state road or something, the project that they're doing. Uh, if they're providing the funding, they're going to want it done pursuant to this agreement. If, they want, if we want to provide the funding, we can say to them, no, we'll fund it, we'll do it ourselves, we don't need you. Is, is there a scenario that we would have a problem with this? Yeah, um, there is. It's, it, the, uh, what the state is saying, the state's saying, first of all, they won't agree to negotiate, they won't agree to change anything. It's either my way or the highway, if you take the pun. Um, the, uh, so you could end up in a situation where they take a right away, we want to locate some sort of public improvement like sewers um, or, or communications or power or anything in there. Um, and the agreement would allow them to tell us, no, put, put them somewhere else, don't put them in our right of way. Um, like, so. for example, remember we wanted to have the dog run up on Route 110. It was an open park mm -hmm. area. Um, Representative Poitick worked really hard with the DOT to get that, or at least we thought we had that to be a dog park. And then they turned around and said, no, we couldn't use it. Is that an example? No, but so that's a different example because we wanted them to basically uh, give us the land so that we could have it be town land and put a, walk, or a dog park on it. In this instance, um, what they would be doing is they would be taking a right of way, typically to either change the layout, layout. of a road. A road or something. Exactly. And okay. so it would be a right of way. It wouldn't be us, them giving us the property. They, it would be their right of way, their property. They're paying for it. Um, you know, so it's, it really does come down to if you want the state to fund the projects in your area, you have to, you have to oh. sign their agreement. Like when you go to a bank for a loan, you know. And this is a common practice it's with the state and all state. towns. Right. Yeah, the state is doing this with all municipalities, not just Stratford. Right. All right. Um, do, we a, do we have a motion on? I forget. Motion and second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes yes. Votes 8 0. Uh, no new business, no appointments. Motion to adjourn. So Mr. Moved. Tanti. Second. Second, Mr. Uh, Tanti. Tanti. Thank you. Let's go, Mets. Awesome.